Hello, I have just posted a new pillow pattern, so I thought I would show you how to make it. I will link the pattern down below if you'd like to follow along. And here I'm going to make the mini size, but all the sizes are made in the same way. The first thing we'll do is start with a long tail cast on onto some circular needles. I've got to cast on 40 stitches for the mini size, so I'll guess about 40 inches worth of a long tail, and I'll pull that out of the ball. Then I'll make my slip knot. And place that on the tip of the knitting needles. And then we'll do a long tail cast on. Split that yarn over your two fingers and cast on 40 stitches for this pattern. And once you've cast on all 40 stitches, if you have an extra bit of tail, trim that down to about eight or 10 inches. And then you'll need a stitch marker at this point, and you'll place that right at the end of your cast on. And we'll start knitting the first round by bringing the stitches towards the tip of the other end of the circular needle and putting that in your left hand. See the working yarn will need to be wrapped around your left hand and you'll connect the two ends just by working directly into that first stitch that we cast on, that was our slip knot. And then the stitch marker will mark the beginning and the end of our rows or rounds. And now this pattern asks me to just knit for quite a while. So we have 46 rounds of just knitting to do. And I'll fast forward that for you, but you can watch. And as you come up to the stitch marker at the end of that second round, make sure you haven't twisted anything before you start the third round. The bottom edge should be smooth, not twisted up. And as long as you're not twisted, you just keep on going. Move the stitch marker over to that right needle and continue knitting round and round and round until you've reached the end of the pattern. Okay, at this point, I want to double check how many rows I have made, or rounds, since we're knitting in the round, you can call it either one. And I'm just going to go ahead and count them. Let me show you how I count my rounds that I've worked. So, since we've done the long tail cast on, we don't count this first straight edge, but you count each little V-stitch all the way up to find out how many rows you've knit. 
So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So I've done 40 rows at this point. And I need to have 46 rows. So I'll pick it back up and work six more rows. And then we'll start binding off. That is 46 rounds here. It is time to bind off. We'll just do a standard bind off. At this point, we can set that stitch marker aside. We're going to bind off a little bit loosely. So that's what the pattern calls for. What we'll do here, one, two, and then slip that first over the second to anchor them together and slide it off the left needle. Knit one more. And do the same, lifting the first stitch over the second. And we'll do that all the way around until we come to the end and we're free of the needles. And the last one, slip the stitch over the second, pull it through. The needle is free of the stitches on the left side, let it go. And then take the yarn, it's going to the ball and we're going to clip it about eight or ten inches away from the needle. And then pull through so the stitch anchors closed and the needles are completely free so you can set those aside and that's how we finished out we'll close those gaps when we weave in the loose ends but that is what your pillow cover will look like when it's off the needles. Let's go ahead and finish up those two loose ends. Smooth out the edges. We'll start with the cast on. That was the beginning of the work. Put that on a darning needle. And pick up the work so you can see the edge. You're going to close that little gap with the tail by finding the stitch right behind the slip knot, running your darning needle through it, and then we'll go back around to the front to hide that slip knot. Follow the pattern of the stitches. Go back out to the outside of the work. We're going to cover that little slip knot by running right behind it. Put the needle right through the stitch behind the st slip knot. And 
and then one more. Go through the slip knot with that darning needle. It's a little tight sometimes, but you can definitely do it. And pull that through, and then I'll anchor that slip knot away from the edge, make that edge smooth. Now, for this project, the edges are going to curl to make that decorative end on the pillowcase. So that means the pearl side is actually going to be the outside on the edge here, so you'll want to anchor it on the smooth stockinette side. So we'll go through one more time with the darning needle and pick a stitch to tie off to and run it around that stitch just once. So I'm going to tie off to this guy right here, run it under, and now take the tail off the darning needle. If you don't like knots at the end of your work, just weave in your tail um, for quite a few stitches, but I like to put knots. So what I'm doing is splitting that tail in two. It's a four ply yarn, so there's two little plies on either side. Then I'm gonna put one half of that tail back on the darning needle. And go back to that stitch we wanted to anchor to which was right here and run that tail through it again lay the two sides out take it off the darning needle we're going to tie two small knots that will lock together so picking up the opposite sides with opposite hands just tie a knot one, drop the ends, switch hands, tie a second knot. Pull this second knot to see if it slips. If it slips, stop pulling and do one more knot the same way. But if it doesn't slip, you can pull really, really tight. You can clip the ends. as close to the knot as you can get. So that bottom edge is tied off. You can curl it up a little bit. You don't see that at all. Let's do the top edge. Put that on the darning needle. And then we'll weave that loose end around to close the gap here at the top. You see the little stitch pattern here? Find the first stitch at the edge of this gap across from the loose end and run your darning needle under both legs of the little V-shaped shape there. Pull it through and then go back and find the stitch where the tail was coming from in the first place and go down and through it and gently pull to close that gap and smooth out the edge there. And then we'll go anchoring it in right here to close that little bitty gap following that pearl pattern. And then go back Follow this stitch down and through. But not through that little V, right under the bump. Okay. Pull that gently. It looks like we still have a little bit of a wonky stitch here, so we'll fix that at this end by just grabbing it and bringing it over together and it blends in. Then we'll tie it off again, remembering that right here is going to be hidden. So we'll bring it through to the smooth side, 
stuck in its side. And pick a stitch to tie it to. We'll choose this one. And then we will take that end off the darning needle and split the plies in half. So two on each side. And put one on the darning needle again. Wrap it around the same stitch we were going to anchor it to. So it comes out right next to the other side of the tail. Take it off the darning needle, set that darning needle aside, and lay the ends in opposite directions. Tie a knot by grabbing those ends with opposite hands. Bring it through and pull it just to the surface of the work. Don't pull too tight right here. Lay it out, switch hands. One more knot. This one, pull tightly, but if it slips, stop pulling and tie one more knot. If it doesn't slip and you can pull very tightly, go ahead and clip off the ends. Ready to put that little pillowcase onto the pillow insert and then sew the ends together. So we grab our pillow insert. This is a five by five inch mini pillow insert. And we put it right inside the case we just made. are going to be a little bit long and that is so we get that cute little curl. We'll sew it together next. Now, normally I would just use a strand of yarn in the same color so it blends together and it will end up looking like that and it curls over and you don't really see your sewing stitches anyway. But I'm going to show you how to do this with a contrasting color so you can see a little bit more clearly how I sew it in. So I need two, maybe three feet of yarn to sew the end closed. So I'll clip that strand. And put that on a darning needle to start sewing. So we'll start with this bottom edge. And what we'll do is count down seven stitches from the top. And that's where we'll start sewing so that it has the ability to curl. So right along the edge, count down from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right at the bottom of that seventh stitch is where we're going to start sewing. So Insert that needle into the two stitches here, the little V's, and pull it through. Leave a small tail that we'll, we will weave in at the very end, and then Make sure you're crossing at the exact same point all the way across. So what I mean is in the same row, that'll ensure your edge is exactly even. 
So following the knitting pattern, we've gone through the center of the stitch here. So right next to it, we'll go through the center of the very next stitch and we'll bring it around to the other side of the pillow, making sure that we're coming through in the correct row. How you do that is check this tail and come around see I've gotten one too high so I need to match where the little tail is. I'll come down a little bit. And through that hole. So we'll leave a little V between. I guess it's an upside down V here. And then you can pull through and sew the ends together. And then we'll go back through, making sure you're in the same row so your end stays straight. Go back through here. Rotate to the other side. Make sure you're going through the correct hole here. We need to go over one more. And I believe in sewing, this is just called a running stitch. But you pull it through and then find the next hole to go through. Check the other side and make sure you're coming through in the correct spot. Right there. And pull that through. I don't pull too tightly because we want to match the tension of the piece. If you pull it too tightly, it'll get a little lumpy and that tail might come through. And we'll just keep doing this all the way down to the end of this side. And then as you come to the end of that, you can just bring it through that one last stitch. Look like that. Take that off your darning needle. And I've got a little bit too much yarn. So I'll trim that off here. Make sure, make sure to leave about eight or 10 inches at the end, but. And to smooth out that edge, gently pull on both sides of the yarn you just sewed. To tie it into the work. Kind of manip manipulate that a bit so that your stitches look how you'd like them to. And then once that edge curls, it'll be hidden. But we'll need to sew those two ends into the work. So I'll put that one end back onto the darning needle.
and since it's going to curl like this, make sure you've pulled it tightly enough to close the end of the pillow. Then put that darning needle through the stitch right above where it's coming from, and it'll go to the edge of the work here. Pull it through, and we'll anchor that to one of the stitches. So just put that needle right under one of those little stitches, take it off the darning needle, and then we'll split those plies and tie a little knot like we did before. Put one end back on the darning needle. and wrap it around the stitch so that it comes right back out next to the other side of the tail. Take that off the darning needle and lay the two ends out to make a knot. Opposite hands on the opposite side strings, cross them, bring it through. Pull it just to the surface on the first knot, drop them, switch hands, make a second knot, pull it to see if it slips. If it doesn't slip, pull it really tight and clip it. If it slips a little bit, make one more knot in the same way. We're going to clip it as close to the knot as possible. And tug it a little bit to tuck it in. And that edge is finished. Do the other side in the exact same way. Put that on the darning needle. And then take that and thread it through right above where it was coming from to the inside of that curl. And take that off the darning needle and we'll split the plies. And this tail's a little bit long, so we'll just trim it here. That'll give us plenty of yarn to make the knot. So lay those in opposite directions. Well, first we'll anchor it in here. So put one end on the darning needle. And find the stitch that was coming from and get that to wrap around and under it. So that it comes out right next to the other side of the tail. And then you can set that darning needle aside. We'll make a knot. Laying the opposite ends opposite directions drop them switch hands make another knot test that you can pull this one tightly without it slipping if it doesn't slip pull it tight 
and clip the ends, but if it does slip, make one more knot in the same way. We'll just cut those loose ends away. And now one end is completely closed. And usually the little sewing hides itself, but it's fun to use a contrasting color to add some spice to it. Now we'll do the other side. It'll be the exact same way. So we'll need another strand of yarn about two or three feet long. And I'll put that on the darning needle. And we'll start sewing from the corner again. We want to make sure our edges line up. So go down to the side you've already sewn and make sure you're going to be having the same row straight on the edge and that it's not twisted. So follow up the column to the top and that's where you'll start sewing. And remember we'll count down from that top edge seven stitches to make the border. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we'll put our needle through right here like we did last time and start sewing that edge closed. Leave a little tail and then in the same way as before we're going to follow down the same row so that our stitching stays straight. Insert it through to the other side. And find the hole in the same row across from the other end. Pull that through. Leave a little tail. And then sew all the way down the edge like we did the other side. And then the last stitch here on the end, finish it out. Gently pull both sides of that string to make sure you close up that pillow top. And the stitching, stitching is even. Curl that down, double check. A little bit tighter if it doesn't close all the way. And then we can tie in those last two ends. Here I've got way too much 
of a tail. So again, I'll trim that down to about eight inches. And put it back on my darning needle and we'll sew it in the same way we did the other side. So go up right above where the stitch is coming through and go to the inside and pull it through. And pick a stitch to anchor to, wrap it around that one. Take that off the darning needle and we'll split the plies of the yarn. And put one back on the darning needle. And wrap it around that stitch again. So it comes out right next to the other side of the tail. Lay those in opposite directions so you can tie your knot. Grabbing opposite sides with opposite hands. Cross it over and bring it through. Bring the first knot just to the surface of the work. Switch hands and pull the second knot tightly. If it slips, stop pulling and make another knot. If it doesn't slip, pull it tight and clip the ends. We'll do that last tail and this pillow will be done. So bring it right above where it's coming from. And pick a stitch to anchor to. Split that yarn in half. and lay the ends out. Put one on the needle. And wrap it around that stitch one more time. And then we'll tie our knot. Grabbing the ends with opposite hands, cross, pull through, and pull it just gently to the surface. Drop the ends, switch hands, one last knot, and try to pull it. If it slips, make one more knot. If it doesn't slip, pull it tight and clip it off. Now, if you just stretch it a little bit, the little knots hide in there. Curl down your edges so they look pretty. This is sort of a kind of a blocking process, but may, make it look nice. And if you wanted to block it before you put it on the pillow, you definitely could do that as well. But since the pillow stretches it, I don't think it needs much blocking. So we have a finished little pillowcase. I hope you found that helpful and I hope you have a wonderful day.